So check this out. Have you ever been in a situation where you are around family members, friends, or coworkers, and they begin talking about something in the news, something traumatic and insane that happened in the world? It may have been a murder or a rape or robbery. Whatever it was, it was an unfathomable act. And the person begins talking and saying things like, man, what's happening in the world? Why is the world so crazy? Now, yesterday I was over at my grandmother's house and I was visiting as I usually do. And one of my aunts was there with her daughter and her daughter is like 40 years old. I guess you could say she's my cousin. Well, she begins talking about something that happened in the news this week. I guess a man murdered his girlfriend and her daughter and is, a, and is now on the run from the police. And after she finishes telling this story, she just blurts out what's going on in the world. This world is crazy. So I'm sitting across the room staring at my cousin after she said what she just said. And I'm watching her as she talks to my grandmother. And I'm thinking to myself, you are the problem. The problem is sin and you are a sinner. Now, this woman is a homosexual drug user. I've heard stories about her beating up her girlfriend in front of her mother. Now, you are the problem. OK, you are the problem. This is it. it that, that just kept ringing in my head. You are the problem. Now, sin is the problem. But God doesn't cast sin into hell. He casts a sinner. Now, this is one of the reasons why it's so important for us as Christians to open the eyes of self-righteous sinners by explaining to them exactly what the Bible says about them. What is wrong with the world? You. I mean, me too, but mainly you. hostile in mind and engaged in evil deeds what is wrong with the world you are the crowning glory of the creation of God you are created to live and bring glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ and instead you are hostile toward the one by whom and for whom you were created that is what's wrong with the world my students come up to me all the time after taking a semester in philosophy, there ought to be a rule. You should not be able to talk about philosophy unless you've had more than a semester of philosophy. <laughs> if you haven't had any, that's fine. Talk away. But if you've had a semester, you are messed up. <laughs> be better off just not taking it at all. And they'll come up and they'll say things to me and they've thought these things out. And I'm on the campus to talk about these issues and dealing with apologetics and they want to catch me alone and ask me these questions and they look at me and they say, I just wanted to ask you that um, if you believe in a God that is omnipotent and omnibenevolent, then how do you reconcile the issue of theodicy? To which I respond, Took a semester of philosophy, right? <laughs> well, yes, how did you know? Because if you hadn't, you'd have just said, listen, God's so powerful and so good, how come bad stuff happens? <laughs> but I'm not going to answer the question until you ask it correctly. Worked on that all week. What do you mean, ask it correctly? <laughs> You're not asking the question properly. What do you mean, ask the question properly? It's my question. You can't tell me how to ask my question. I will answer your question when you ask it properly. How do I ask it properly? Here's how you ask that question properly. You look me in my eyes and you ask me this. How on earth can a holy and righteous God know what I did and thought and said on yesterday and not kill me in my sleep last night? You ask it that way and we can talk. But until you ask the question that way, you don't understand the issue. Until you ask the question that way, you believe the problem is out there. 
Until you ask the question that way, you believe that there are somehow some individuals who in and of themselves deserve something other than the wrath of Almighty God. Until you ask me the question that way, until you flip the script and ask the question this way and say, why is it that we are here today? Why has he not consumed and devoured each and every one of us? Why, why, oh God, does your judgment and your wrath tarry? When you ask it that way, you understand the issue. When you ask it the other way, you believe in the supremacy of man. How dare God not employ his power on behalf of almighty man. You flip the question around, you believe in the supremacy of Christ. How dare I steal his heir? Because the last breath I took, I borrowed it from him. And I'm never going to give it back. When you borrow something and never give it back, you're stealing. I mean, you need to take a moment and get right right now. <laughs> the problem is me. The problem is the fact that I do not acknowledge the supremacy of Christ in truth. The problem is, I start with me as the measure of all things. The problem is, I judge God based upon how well he carries out my agenda for the world. And I believe in the supremacy of me in truth. And as a result, I want a God who is omnipotent but not sovereign. If I have a God who is omnipotent but not sovereign, I can wield his power. But if my God is both omnipotent and sovereign, I am at his mercy. Who am I? The crown and glory of the creation of God. Knit together in my mother's womb, why am I here to bring glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ? What is wrong with the world? Me. I don't do what I was meant to do. How can what is wrong be made right? Right. 